Hello friends and welcome, it's Sarah Liz and I am so excited to share this video with you. I've been thinking about this one since last year. We're gonna make three shape card projects. This first one is using the woolen mitten dies from Sunny Studios and it's awesome. And I love that Sunny Studios price point is really affordable. This die set is huge. So here's the mitten and I'm gonna hold this up to an A2 card base. This will fit in an A2 envelope. It fills an entire card, but really it's designed so that you can use it for a shape card if you want to. And I don't know what it is about a shape card. I just think they're so much fun. And so we're gonna make a couple today. And then I think there's gonna be a lot more shape cards on the channel. They're just quick and easy, but they're so different. Like you don't just go buy a shape card in the store. I'm gonna step them up a little bit, but you could actually do all of these projects a little more simply and be in and out of the craft room in about 15 minutes. So I have taken my mitten and I just went around the edges with some darker red ink just to give it a little bit of dimension. And then I ran it through this Spellbinders embossing folder. It's called Peppermint Stripes and it's a 2D folder, but that actually works better for a shape card. Then I'm playing with the trim for my mitten. I've cut it out of some white glitter cardstock and there's this little ruffly bit and I was trying to decide if I wanted it and which side of the mitten I would put it on. In the end, I didn't use it. I just glued the glitter cardstock straight down onto the mitten and then there are a bunch of decorator pieces you can add to kind of step things up, make it a little fancy. I love this snowflake. I have tons of snowflake dyes, right? Like I just, something about them, I can't control myself. Uh, and so I buy them all. But this one is both small and delicate, but also not a pain to glue together. And I really love that about that. So the plan is to keep the snowflake in the middle. And then I want to put this poinsettia kind of on the cuff. And I've cut it out of some shimmery black cardstock. I thought about a handful of different colors I could bring in, but in the end, I wanted to submit this as my entry for the Colorful Options Challenge this month. It's a monthly color-based challenge, and it's not even all that complicated. The color is red, and all shades of red, so your pinks and then your neutral colors. Also, any art project of any kind, I will link to the challenge. I am on their design team. I just think it's super fun, and it's it's a great way for me to stretch outside my comfort zone. A couple months ago, it was neon, and that was a real challenge for me. So I'm just gluing things down now. I'm adding my little bit of wet glue to the back of this snowflake. For the poinsettia, I added quite a bit of glue because I also kind of went around those, I don't know if I should call them petals or leaves. I think they're all leaves, right? Um, and just kind of curled them a little bit. And then there's these little stitches. There's a bunch of different places you could put the stitches and you can cut them out in different numbers. Um, you could cut them straight into the mitten, which is a great way to make sure that things are straight and even, which I'm not always really good at. You're gonna see me try like 10 different ways to make sure that it works here. Because I have that embossing and it's a really tiny die, I'm coming in and adding my glue, but then I'm using my pokey tool just to make sure I get a full line and not so much glue that it's gonna ooze out the sides. And then for this third one, I needed my tweezers. I was having a day, you guys. Sometimes I'm having a day, but it's still a pretty quick and easy card. I've grabbed three gold pearls, really small ones, just to add into the center of that poinsettia for a little bit of bling. There, Actually, there's a fair bit of bling with the, the glitter white cardstock for the snowflake and then the shimmering black cardstock. To turn this into a card and not just a mitten, I've taken another mitten out of that same red cardstock and I brought it to my scoreboard and I just scored it right at the base of the cuff, okay? And then I'll add my wet glue all over that and I will just kind of hold the two in the air. This is how I prefer to line things up. It helps me to sort of feel the edges with my fingers and then I'll press that together and that will finish up shape card number one. You guys, this seriously, 15 minutes start to finish, and I wasn't sure what I was doing. For the next two cards, we're gonna use the same die set. It's this stocking. I have used this stocking so many times. It's ever so slightly larger than an A2 panel. It will fit in an A2 envelope. And here's the first card. We're gonna use an emergency sentiment, like super, super quick, 
super, super easy. I cut it from some pattern paper, but I still wanted to add a little bit of that dimension. Again, you could skip this. I will say, however, that that pattern paper is not super sturdy. So I am going to glue that onto another piece of white cardstock just to make sure uh, that it's not going to fall apart in the hands of one of my children. And it's probably going to them. They got some stockings last year using this die and I used the method I'll show you next. Um, and there was like a video game hidden inside. They got Minecraft, which has been absolutely soul consuming for them. They think about it. They dream about it. Oh, you guys, I don't, I don't know anything about video games. Uh, I don't really get it. But anyway, they love it. It is the gift of the year. So for the stocking, I wanted more room on the inside to write my message. So instead of scoring it just under the cuff, uh, I scored it at about a half inch. Usually I think a half inch for me gives me plenty of like a gluing room. So things are gonna stay together pretty nicely. And then you can see that opens and closes really nicely. And I'm gonna pull out the decorator pieces. I used my same white glitter cardstock because it's the holidays and it's got a sparkle. And I'm gonna add that up to the top. I will say you have these two pieces for the front and back of the stocking, or like the toe and the heel line them up first do a dry run i didn't on the heel here and that <laughs> it wasn't a mistake it turns out fine but it, it it's a little funky trying to figure out just where they fit in then i have this candy cane i love that it's a bunch of little pieces i know that there are candy cane dies that are just two pieces that you glue together but i like the look of this so much better and the base of the candy cane gives you those little indentations to show you where all of these little pieces should go. I'm also using my scrapbook.com. I think they're called stack and sort trays. I'll link to them. They they keep getting sold out and then they come back and then they get sold out. Um, but keep an eye out. They're great. I always prep my die cut pieces before the video filming begins. Um, and so they just keep me super, super organized with all of my different projects or leftover pieces that I might have. I am bringing in the more holiday sentiments. And this one says, I've been watching you sleep, Santa. And I am going to glue this one all the way down. I have used just a two inch red circle. Nothing's glued down yet. I'm just kind of getting the lay of the land. But I know the holly's going to overlap it. So normally for an emergency card, I would put that on there with my removable adhesive, but this time I didn't. I have some one millimeter thin foam tape on the back of there, and I'm going to set that on top of my candy cane. I have not glued down the candy cane yet, right? I just thought it was easier to kind of lift that up and add a little glue after the fact. And then I will try to figure out how I'm going to arrange my holly. I tell you what. I never feel so clumsy as when I am trying to layer up leaves. Like I know visually what these should look like and where they should go, but I always seem to like end up with glue everywhere. Anyway, I have found for me this year anyway, that gluing the two leaves together first is easiest. And then on this one, I'm gonna glue the berries down separately. Uh, but on the second one, I'll even glue the berries straight to the leaves because otherwise I'm struggling with spacing. I've added one millimeter foam tape behind the leaves as well. Um, normally I use the Big Mama foam roll, but scrapbook.com has a new one millimeter roll and it's about a quarter inch wide. It's narrower than most foam tape you've ever seen. And it fits beautifully behind little die cuts like this. So I used that one. And then here I'm fumbling with the berries because I need it to not overlap my sentiment. We'll get there. It's gonna be fine. To add a little extra shimmer, I'm bringing in my Nuvo Aqua Shimmer Pen and I'm just gonna go over the berries for the, the holly leaves and then that will finish up shape card number two. It's quick, it's easy, I love it, but then I love this one more, right? This one gets fancier, it takes a little more time, but it's a gift and a gift card holder. And so that to me, I'm willing to do a little extra. I've cut two of the stocking base pieces and I'm going to trim the edge of the cuff. I'm just extending the line of the stocking. So I'm essentially giving myself a taller sock and it's going to make it easier to hide the gift card in there. I took just one of those and I'm gonna ink blend around the edges using my same darker red ink. This is not fancy and you could totally skip this. 
but I'm going to add a ho, ho, ho later and I'm going to ink blend on that. And so I like it when they match, right? So there's multiple pieces that have that blending on them. So I have this hotel key that I'm going to call a gift card. It's the same size and I'm holding that up on my stocking. And I am just gonna figure out kind of how much I wanna chop off the top of this. You wouldn't have to, but I think the stocking ends up a little disproportionate, a little taller and longer and less chubby and cute. Um, so I like this step. I want that gift card to hang out the top a little bit. So wherever that was, I gave myself like a quarter inch, a half an inch um, where that, that gift card will hang out. Then I'm gonna set aside the piece we ink blended and I'm gonna bring that key back on top of the back of the stocking. Again, it's hanging out the top by about a quarter inch, half an inch. And I am just tracing around the outside to give myself a line. I need to create a pocket. So when I go to add my glue, I'm gonna go to as far toward the edge as I can on the tall part of the stocking and then I'm gonna fill in pretty well along the bottom but I'm not getting too close to that pencil line because otherwise the pocket gets really tight and it's harder to pull the gift card in and out. Then I'll lay the other piece of the stocking on top of it um, and I will press firmly. And then you can see my little gift card just slides in. It is hanging out the top and I need to make sure when I go to put the top on the stocking that I keep that in mind. I'm adding on the same sort of decorative elements that we did the first time, right? The same white glitter cardstock. I'm doing a dry run this time because I learned from the first time around. A little wet glue also helps to give me some wiggle room and make sure that I get that angle just right. I don't know what it is about this stocking, but it, I mean, it is kind of chubby and cute and that's fun. So I'm gonna put the gift card back inside, hanging out the top, and then I'm gonna lay it on top of that cuff. This is just a piece of plain white cardstock and I am gonna trace around the edge of the stocking and the gift card and I'm gonna trim out around that. I need to create a little well, a pocket for that gift card and then the stocking itself to slide into. So in the end, I'm gonna cut a couple of these. It does not have to be pretty, no one's gonna see it. I'm putting it back on top of the stocking here and there just to make sure I've given myself enough room. And I'm gonna set aside two of my cuffs, one out of glitter cardstock, one out of plain white, and then I will end up with three pieces that have this exact same notch cut out of it. So I'll just take that first template, I will trace it with my pencil and trim them out with my scissors. Do they match perfectly? Nope, does it matter? Really doesn't, as long as it fits. I'm gonna lay them each on top of each other and glue them together. And that creates just enough room for this to slide on like the top of a box, okay? But think about like there's two layers to the red cardstock plus the gift card. So like three layers of cardstock. I, and I cut it out of 120 pound cardstock. So kind of check and see, depending on the weight of your cardstock, how much room you're gonna need. Then I'm gonna take this piece, the three pieces that we've glued together with the notches cut out, and I'm gonna glue that onto my plain white cardstock. That's gonna be in the back. And then I'm gonna add glue one more time only to the piece with the notch cut out, right? Not all over. And I'm gonna add my white glitter cardstock on top of that, okay? And this is it, right? That's maybe the most complicated part of the whole thing. You can see there's a little pocket in there. This is gonna slide on and off of that stocking really, really easily, all right? On and off, no big deal. You could then just add like your candy cane and your holly and call it a day. You could add uh, an emergency sentiment like we did last time, that would be great. But I wanted to show you a couple different options. Um, I am bringing in the Paper Crafting Magic stamp set from Trinity Stamps and I'm gonna stamp pull in some green ink on the holly since that holly and berries and the candy cane are all going on the cuff but honestly i'm giving it to somebody in person and so i'll just tell them i probably didn't need to do that i am going to double up the candy cane because it's going to be overhanging the cuff of that stocking and it's just 80 pound cardstock it's not anything super heavy and i wanted to make sure that again if it does go to a child it will survive this storm i'm adding glue only in the middle 
So I'm not gluing the candy cane onto the red cardstock of the stocking, right? And I don't have glue hanging out at the top. And then I will add just a little bit of foam tape behind the leaves on the holly just because there's a fair bit of dimension with the candy cane and I didn't want things to kind of lean all wonky off to the side. You could leave it like this and actually you could mass produce it that way pretty well. I'm going to finish up just those pieces with this is like a red glitter pen from scrapbook.com and I hadn't used it yet this year. <laughs> so I brought that guy out and that was fun. I have these ho 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 letters that I have cut out and I cut a ton of them. This is the joyful alphabet die set from scrapbook.com. You get a handful of the letters in like a really big super size, the most common letters, and then it's going to spell a handful of words and they'll show you on the website. But then you get the entire alphabet um, out of this smaller size. I love how whimsical it is and how chunky it is because it makes them really easy to stack up and glue together if you want that dimension and you can make them all wonky and no one's going to know the difference. I went ahead and ink blended with a blue dye ink about halfway up and I just sort of held them still on some mint tape and then I'm using my scrapbook.com shimmer pen to go over the top and what I love is if my ink blending is a little splotchy or not great you can't tell once you put the shimmer pen on it. When I'm stacking up letters like this I put glue on two of them and then I press and hold with the wax tip of my pickup tool. They don't have to go together perfectly until I get the last one on and then I pick them up and fiddle with them to make sure everything is straight. So I'm going to show you one more time and then I won't make you watch the rest. I'm going to put glue on the two H's and then I'm going to take my wax tool, I'm going to pick that up, press and hold, press and hold, pick the whole thing up and make sure they're straight. If you do it that way, you can put those together really fast. That was like two minutes, three minutes to get all of these stacked up and they're all three thick. And we're going to do this like goofy ho, ho, ho and sort of stagger them on our gift card holder. I'm adding glue. Um, just onto the back and that gives me a little bit of wiggle room. I mean, I do care if they're mostly straight, <laughs> but just mostly, okay? They're kind of wonky. It's fun. What I love about a project like this too is that this is something that gets reused. I'm not going to write somebody's name on this, though uh, the tag kit that came out with the emergency sentiments is a great option here. You could add one of those to the back and then year after year, you can just use your removable adhesive and change the name of who it's going to. But this was a lot of work and I love the idea that this is something that's gonna stay in my family, rotate among, like all my family lives in town. So it might rotate from one family to the other, um, but we get to keep it and it's fun. So those are our three projects for today. I would love to know which one is your favorite. I would also love to know if you have a favorite die set that you use for making shape cards because there's going to be more of them and I'm in the market. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I will see you next time.